All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, in today's video, we have a video from Charlie Kirk. This is Charlie Kirk Shatters, the white privilege myth, what the left won't tell you. Now, if you are familiar with this channel, I have done a lot of videos in the past on the whole entire topic of white privilege, racism, and just this, this narrative that people continue to follow and they continue to believe, but it's not true. Okay, it is not true. So without further ado, we're going to uh, see what Charlie Kirk got to say about white privilege. And let's get to it. Let's go. White privilege is a racist myth that is rooted in bigotry, trying to classify people based on their skin color. If you are a racist, you have something to apologize for. If you're a white person who is not a racist, you have nothing to apologize for. And anyone who makes you apologize just based on the color of their skin, of your skin, they're the racist and you're not. It's that simple. And so this idea of our systems are racist also does not stand up against any sort of cross-examination of different ethnic groups in our country. White people, on average, if you were to classify it, and again, I don't like the over-racialization of our country, but if that's where the left wants to lead this, the facts don't even support their entire charge against our country, is that Asian Americans and Indian Americans are far wealthier on average in our country than white Americans. This idea that every single white person in the country is living a life of luxury and convenience is totally untrue. And according to not just the Hoover Institution, but U.S. Census data and government labor data, this is the greatest statistic to dispel it, which is that... You know, I want to pause real quick, okay, because when it comes to white privilege... A lot of people think, like, even what Charlie Kirk said, a lot of people think that they're talking about simply the richness of white people. But when I talk to people that are the same race as me as, you know, black, a black American, I talk to people about, you know, white privilege. And what they're referring to is simply like uh, if a police was to pull over, this is just an example, if a police was to pull us over and, you know, you as a black man get pulled over, there's more consequences that may come with being pulled over as a black person. Or a white person that get pulled over, you was to get pulled over. They believe that you get it pulled over and, you know, you, you get on their ID and you go off with a warning. Me personally, I always tell them like, or it, for example, for a better, a better analogy is when someone asked me and said, if I date a black girl and she called the police and said, I put my hands on her, the police is going to just automatically think that it's two ninjas just hitting each other. That's what the police will think. Okay. And if I dated a white girl and a white girl called the police and say that I put my hands on her in the back and the, and the police officer show up and see there's a black man and a white woman, he's automatically going to arrest me. And whatever the white woman say, he's going to he's going to he's going to basically, you know, affirm to that. He's going to believe whatever it is that she says about me. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like that is so wrong in so many different areas. I don't think that's 100 percent true all the time. Is there times where that? particular thing could happen yes there are times that, that that particular thing can happen but i don't believe that is just the the majority of times where you dating the white girl she called the police saying you put her hands on anything you get arrested like i don't believe that's a hundred percent true all the time you know what i'm saying now i believe that the police i believe the police will come in there and i believe that some officers will be open-minded to hear both sides of the stories and if if that white girl has a lot of proof on her that shows that she put her hands on then yes you're going to go to jail but i don't think it's just a, in it uh, automatically oh oh man you're a black person oh yeah you're gonna arrest you're arrested like i don't think that's real but that's all movie based like i just feel like that's that's more like fiction than anything you know what i'm saying like th this is all fake i don't think that it's true you feel me but that's what a lot of people say when it comes to white privilege like they is not everybody thinks about the richness of white people they think about scenarios like that that could happen that that will show white privilege but when it comes to white privilege i said it plenty of times i don't personally believe in white privilege i never had no bad experience with a white person and on top of that even when i got pulled over by officers you know what i'm saying when i deserve to have a ticket when i deserve certain things to be done to me yet these officers that were white pulled me over and they gave me off with a warning let me go with a warning you know what I'm saying? I believe it's always the tone and how you speak to an officer. It's always the respect level. You're both human. And half of the time, you know, if it's a man and an officer man, you're both men. So speak to another man with respect just the way you want to be spoken to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe that everything goes back into the character of who, like the person that you are. You know what I'm saying? Your character means everything. So if you come to an officer and you come at them wrong, of course, they're going to come back at you wrong. And there's going to be things done to you that, that could have been so avoided 
if you just show them respect and if you show them respect they will show you respect the times i show officer respect they show me respect that's how i got off with so many warnings and yet i'm a black american i'm fully black you know what i'm saying i'm not mixed i don't think i'm mixed with anything i don't really know my father but i'm i'm fully black from my from my knowledge you know what i'm saying but anyways let's finish going ahead and get to it. i just want to say that a black child raised by a mother and father is more likely to succeed by every independent metric than a white child who is raised by a single mother. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not bashing single mothers. I think that they're modern day heroes. The point is that there's two parent privilege in our country, not white privilege in our country. And if we're serious about rebuilding the black family, which we should be, we should be putting fathers back in the home, but be very careful to try to, to, try to connect disparities necessarily with discrimination. And so there's other parts of privilege as well in our country that are non-racial privilege. For example, anyone here the firstborn child? I am. You know that you have an exponentially higher likelihood of succeeding than the second child or the third child or the youngest child? You ever heard of firstborn privilege? Probably not. How about only, anyone here an only child? You have way higher likelihood of succeeding. Every independent study shows this. Now, we can, we can laugh and chuckle, of course. The point is that there are different inputs at times for why certain disparities are created. And blaming all of it on deep-seated, harbored racial resentment is not just incorrect, it's really corrosive for all of us. Instead of just looking at skin color, look at other circumstantial factors such as education, such as two-parent households. And the argument that, they'll, that the activists will make, and I'm sure someone here will make the argument, is that racism created those systems, right? That it was racist. And I can actually agree with part of that. Just be very specific of what systems those are. And if we're serious about improving the livelihood of our fellow countrymen, maybe we should be less focused on government welfare and more focused on work and literacy education and bringing fathers back into the home. Hey, I like that. I like that. I truly... I, I Don't honestly, buy another I, pair I, of glasses. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> yo. I actually like that. You know what I'm saying? I love what he said. Bringing, focusing on bringing the fathers back into the household. That's very important. You know what I'm saying? Because like I, like I just said a few minutes ago, I was raised in a single mother household before my stepfather came along when I was eight years old. But even then, you know what I'm saying? It was hard for me to adjust to a stepfather because I wanted my actual biological father. You feel me? So, I mean, it's just, you know, it, that's how it was for me. I don't know about everybody else. So a lot of people can adjust to that stepfather really early in their life. But me, it took me almost, it took me until I was 18 to truly adjust to it. And by that time, I was getting ready to move out the crib. So, you know, it's just like, I don't know. That's just my story personally. But I like what Charlie Kirk said. Like, when it comes to white privilege people need to understand that this is not like me personally i don't look at everything a racial thing you know what i'm saying like i just truly don't when you talk about black people and the police officer i always ask what did that person do um or how did that person react in any, to, in any given way that may have put the officer life in danger? Yeah, the officer walks around with a weapon and everything like that but then you got to understand when the officer pull us over we know we know when an officer is pulling us over. Like, we're not pulling over for a random car. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know that all snap is the police. You know what I'm saying? They have a, they have more authority than we have. You feel me? As a, as just a civilian. You feel me? But you have to understand that putting an officer life at risk can also put your life at risk. The officer don't know you from a can of paint. Yet, we don't know the officer per, as a as an individual from a can of paint. But that, that badge, that vest that they carry, we know that. Okay? So, we honor that we respect that you know what i'm saying now like i said we may not know the individual but again an officer if an officer came at you and just started killing you for no for no given reason they just came to your car and just blasted you for no reason god forbid that ever happens but i'm just saying if the officer ever did that then you know that officer will it, it will be a lot of consequences for that officer and that officer will have a lot to lose a lot to lose especially being an officer in america like he will have so much to lose bro you know what i'm saying but i'm just saying though it's like if you as a person is in the car and you're getting pulled over by the officer the best thing you could do is just respect the authority of an officer respect the authority the officer tells you hey put your hands right here on the west so i can see it just respect that it don't need to be a back and forth type of argument bro just respect that i get it a lot of men carry pride in them and that's the that's the fall of men in general is that we carry so much pride but sometimes we need to let that pride go and just be like you know what my my life is more important than than anything 
So I'm going to do what this officer says because if I retaliate, if I resist, it can lead to me being arrested. It can lead to me losing this. It can lead to this. It can lead to that. It can lead to so many different charges against me. So as a man, I'm going to just honor or respect the authority that the officer has. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the same thing for anything. The military, anybody that wears a certain vest or a certain badge, like they have authority. They have some type of authority that we have to respect the government, even though we may not like the government, but the authority that we have to respect of the government we have to pay our taxes it's respect it's the thing that we have to do is an honor thing you know what i'm saying i just hope this all makes sense to y'all because this is how i think personally you know what i'm saying i just i just think that everything like people base everything off race but i don't think everything is based off race you feel me i like probably because i never had any racial things happen to me but i'm not a i'm not saying that there is not racism out there but to say everything is a white privilege thing for white people and to say that oh white people get away with this and white people get away with this i'm pretty sure we go to majority of the white folks in today's society like i'm pretty sure 80 90 percent of these white folks be, are going through the same thing that a re that somebody of not the same skin color to them they're going through uh, they, you can go as a black person, you can ask whatever. I'm pretty sure these white people are going through pretty much the same thing that any black person or anybody else is going through. It's as white people in the trenches that's still trying to get out the mud. It's some white people out there that's still struggling to pay their bills. Some white people out there that's still struggling to even get a meal. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, at the end of the day, bro, we all live in America. We all, we all going through something, especially within today's economy. So, just i'm just saying bro don't look at race for every single situation everything is not a race-based situation you know what i'm saying a lot of things is a choice in life you feel me like if you choose to if you choose to grow up and be different than your environment then you will be more likely to succeed if you choose to grow up and be just like your environment then you will be just like the people in your environment so if the people in your environment all they do is sell drugs and do this and do that and they game bang that that, that is what you're most likely going to be if you choose to do that but if you choose to say hey, you know what i want to stand out and be different from the crowd don't care if they laugh at me for doing it. i want to stand out and be different then guess what you will most likely succeed in this life you feel me that's just how i think about everything everything in life is a situation i mean everything in life is a choice it's not like a oh i was raised in this so i gotta be this no you have a choice to either become that or you have a choice to be different from that i chose to be different i'm from the west side of chicago i chose to be different i was raised on the south side of chicago so i literally chose to change my life and be different i have no man in my family i could look up to and say you know what i want to be like them i chose to be different i chose to stand out so that's just the thing everything in life is a choice i'm not blaming everything on a oh that's a white person oh my gosh white privilege they get away with this no they like no i'm not blaming everything on a white person or on race and period like no i don't look at race you know what i'm saying if we all being for real we all come from the same ancestor the same descendant of, we're we're all descendants from adam and eve if you want to be real that's how i believe that's what i truly believe in you know what I'm saying? i believe this earth started with two human beings and i believe that we're all descendants from no two human beings and that's why we in sin now that's the fall of man that that was the start so i mean i'm just saying that's just how i believe bro but anyways, man, y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. Shout out to Charlie Kirk for this powerful, powerful video. Without further ado, it's been your boy, Depend. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.